Next up, we're going to talk a little bit about optimizing a bucket allocator. So a bucket allocator is just like a buddy system allocator, except a couple of things have been simplified or changed, and that results in sort of the general implementation conceptually being a little bit simpler, although when we optimize it, it potentially gets a little bit more complicated. And it changes what the complications are in building the implementation. Now, there are a couple problems with the buddy system that we can solve with the uh, with a bucket allocator, although we get new problems in exchange. The first big problem that we run into with the buddy allocator is that it only handles allocating power of two sizes. And that's not that it will return a region of memory, which is a power of two size and be happy about it. That is, we take the request from the user, we add a header to it, and then after that we round up to the next power of two size. So what that means is that if the user says malloc 32, they request some power of two, that's actually our worst case. Because we're gonna take 32, we go 32 plus size of header, maybe size of header is eight, so this is like 40, and then we need to round that up to the next power of two. So that goes up to 64. And so in the buddy system, when the user requests the power of two size, the thing that we actually have to allocate, the amount of space we're going to use up is double what they requested. Every time powers of two are our worst case. That's a problem because programmers kind of like to allocate power of two size regions of memory. That seems natural. It seems like it should be efficient in the machine and the buddy system makes it the worst case. So the way that a bucket allocator is going to deal with this is that it's going to, it still is only going to allocate specific size chunks of memory and it will round up to the next chunk that it knows how to deal with, but it will offer additional sizes beyond just powers of two. The most common case or the sort of simplest case is that we're going to offer the powers of two uh, but in addition to that, we'll offer a couple of extra values. The most obvious value is sort of the, the power of two plus the previous power of two value. So the intermediate value here is 48, the intermediate value here is 96, the intermediate value here is 192. But sort of real world uh, bucket style allocators, which is most modern allocators, offer more sizes than that because this isn't enough sizes to be super efficient. So we'll do something like go down even one more power of two. And so after 32, we'll offer 40, 48, uh, 56. And then after 64, we'll add in 16s. So 64 plus 16 is 80, then 96, then uh, plus 16 is 112, et cetera. So we get, a, we get a bunch of different sizes. We still wanna make it so that as we're working with bigger sizes, the spacing between them gets bigger. So that's why between 32 and 64, we're jumping by eights, and then between 64 and 128, we're jumping by 16s. If we just go even spacing, then that's not changing much. The, uh, the option where we allow every size to be allocated is even spacing, with the spacing being one, going to even spacing with the spacing being eight is not drastically better. But if we go to sort of progressively increasing regions of even spacing, we get behavior like JE malloc or uh, DL malloc or any of these other sort of common allocators. Now, the uh, next complication with the buddy system that a bucket style allocator is going to try to deal with is that the the coalescing process, building coalescing correctly in the buddy system is annoying. It's really easy sort of on the whiteboard. We say XOR gets you your buddy and then you can do the arithmetic and mess around, but it's not like super convenient to actually implement that necessarily, especially when we start to add in the complications of a real system. And the other annoyance is that we have to do the uh, the coalescing together of smaller sizes into bigger sizes, which means that we do have to do this sort of uh, traversal of the list 
when we end up in a situation where we put together two 32s and get a 64, which gets us the buddy, so we put them together into 128, and that gets us a buddy. And so we still really can't reliably say that this is a constant time operation. It's, a, it's not necessarily a logarithmic time operation, but it is a variable time op operation. And so the pause for free is potentially variable time, unless we do something like have a background thread and then we get into messes with locks. Whereas we'd like to make it with a bucket system where, uh, where free could be constant time. So the simplest way, sorry, camera battery change. The, uh, we were talking about how to deal with freeing in a bucket allocator and how when we free in a bucket allocator, that allows us to potentially do it in constant time. The way we accomplish that is as follows. So we're going to, just like the, just like the, uh, the buddy system, we're gonna have an array of free lists. So we have our array of free lists, and we're gonna have in the array of free lists, we have a bunch of different sizes. So maybe the smallest size that we deal with is 16, then we have 24, then 32, then uh, 40, then 48, then 64. Whatever our size sequence is, we have those sizes. And initially, they're all gonna start empty. So the first malloc that we have to do for a given size, let's say that we do malloc 32. So if we're gonna do malloc 32, then um, we need to allocate some 32s. And the way we're gonna allocate the 32s is we're gonna allocate an entire page of 32s. We're not gonna worry about trying to split larger pieces or, and the thing with coalescing is we don't have to worry about joining smaller pieces. So uh, how many 32s are there? There's four 32s and 128. There are uh, eight 128s in 1024, and there are four 1024s in a page. So four times four is 16 times eight. It sounds like 128 to me. So we're gonna allocate a list here of 32, 32, 128 of these. We're allocating a page of 32s. Now, there's one complication to that story, and that is that um, these 32s are 32s including the, the header data structure. So we can't actually do 32s. This would have had to have been like a malloc 20 So we add in our header structure, which might be eight, which brings us up to 28, and that's gonna get rounded up to 32. If we had really wanted to malloc 32s, those would have gotten plus eight, would have gotten rounded up to 40, and instead of having 128 of them, we'd have like 110 of them, or whatever it comes out to. In any case, when we allocate uh, blocks of a size with a like simple bucket allocator, we allocate a whole page of the same size. And what this means is that all these blocks are interchangeable and we just don't care about which one's which, which means we can get away with not coalescing. And in getting away with not coalescing, uh, that means that we can do constant time free. If we allocate a 32, we just pull it off the head of the list, constant time, assuming we don't have to mmap an uh, entire additional page because we ran out of them. So we still have variable time allocated because we may or may not have to do a uh, system call to get a new page of them. But at free time, we just push it onto the list, like stack push operation, and that is free. Definitely constant time, definitely the constant is one. So that's a benefit to the, uh, the, the simple buckets, simple bucket allocator. There's a bunch of complications with this plan though. Simplest 
example of a complication is what do we do when we get to larger sizes? Let's say we end up with a bucket up here that is 3072. That's a like reasonable power of two adjacent size. It's uh, 2048 plus 1024. And so if we try to malloc 3060, malloc 3060, We'll add 8, that's the size of our header, get 3068, round up to 3072. We don't have any on the list, so we're going to have to get a page of them. A page of 3072s gets us one 3072. So, two problems. One, there was no benefit to um, not having this just be treated as a large allocation. We're using the whole page for the 3072, and that's not terribly efficient. Um, and I mean, I guess that's really the problem here is whether we treat this as a large allocation or we do it through a bucket, we get the same result, which is 25% um, wasted space here. And that's wasted space within a page, so it matters. There's no virtual memory trickery that's gonna sort of save us that memory. Uh, cache line trickery might be argued that it saves us the memory, but we'd rather pack things closer together. The only real way to solve that problem is instead of allocating one page here, we have to allocate more than one page here. So if instead of allocating uh, one page, we allocate four pages, four pages is enough to stuff five 3072s in it, and then we only have uh, four times four is 16, one sixteenth of the space wasted, I think. Which is a little bit more efficient. Now. That's great, but, and that solves our problem. We could have a different like chunk size allocated. It isn't really significantly more expensive to go allocate multiple pages, although, and this is really, really efficient if we're doing a bunch of allocations that are all of the same relatively small size. This will be pretty close to optimal if we're doing all allocations of size, uh, of size 20. A million allocations each of size 20, this works great. If we do a million allocations that are all of different small sizes, this is terrible because we'll end up with only a couple of allocations in each bucket, but every bucket is going to have an entire page or as we get to bigger buckets, multiple pages allocated to it. That seems bad, but if we think about it a little bit more, even if we have a hundred of these small sizes, And we allocate two pages each on average for each bucket. And then we allocate one object of each size. That's only going to be um, uh, 200 times 4K is uh, 800K of memory. And we can, we're okay on a modern computer with having a program have the allocator at startup or over time, allocate an extra one meg of memory. That's not the end of the world. So we could get away with just that overhead without too much trouble, but we'd still like to avoid it if we could. And at some point we do have to decide that we're gonna do our switch between small allocations, which use the buckets, and larger allocations where um, we're just gonna let MMAP do the work for us. But, there are tricks that we can do to get even fancier. Oh, one additional trick that's worth considering is we have to deal with sort of multiple page chunk allocations to fill in our, our buckets already. But the way we're doing it here is we have to go ahead and find each block of size 3072, turn it into a linked list cell, which means writing to that region of memory and then put it on the list, which means that when we mmap, we're touching all of that memory. As allocators like JE malloc like to take advantage of, if we can map in memory and never touch it, it doesn't actually cost us anything. So that, that's an optimization that we'd like to be able to do. We'd like to be able to make it so that we could map in four pages for blocks of size 3072, but not touch beyond the first page. Another thing that we'd like to be able to do is do allocations that are really small. It'd be super cool if we could efficiently handle 
malloc one. So far we've had no solution that can possibly officially handle malloc one, but with a neat optimization to a bucket allocator, we actually can do that. That optimization works as follows. We're going to get rid of the header. We're gonna completely eliminate our header, and that's gonna save us a bunch of space. Well, we can't completely eliminate the header, but what we can do is not put the header in the allocation. Instead, we're gonna put the header at the beginning of the chunk that we allocate. So in this model, if we wanna go ahead and all the way down here, we're gonna have chunks of size four. Four is so small that it's not even uh, pointer aligned. We can't, um, we can't usefully fit a header field in a block of size four. So what we want to do is if the user is going to say M -mal uh, malloc four, and we want this to be dealt with efficiently, first step is going to be, we want to add our header field, but let's just not have a header. And then we're going to do an entire page of fours. So now we want to add to our linked list, uh, 1024 times uh, blocks of size four, but, and we could almost do that, except we can't store a linked list cell. And when we try to free it, but when we allocate this block of size four and then the user tries to free it, we have no way of finding out the size, so we have no way to know where to put it. But we can take advantage of the fact that we know that our allocator is always allocating in entire pages, or maybe in chunks that are bigger than a page, but we'll start thinking about pages. So we have this, we have this page, and in this page we have one o two four blocks of size four, and these one o two four blocks of size four are going to take up the entire page, but. If we are careful about how we, uh, in fact, we don't have to be careful with single pages. With single pages, we know that the page is page aligned. So anytime we have an allocation of size four, if we have a pointer into one of these, we can do pointer arithmetic to find the beginning of the block. And so instead of putting our metadata for allocations at the beginning of each, or sorry, the beginning of the page. So instead of putting our metadata for each allocation at the beginning of that block, we're going to put shared metadata up at the beginning of the page. So at the beginning of the page, we're gonna have a bunch of fields like size equals four. And the other piece of metadata that we need to have is used flags. We need to have a used flag for each one of these, um, one of these objects. And there's potentially one or two, four of these objects, although we're adding metadata at the beginning, so we can't use the first few of them. But let's go ahead and assume that there are one or two, four of them. So 1024 divided by eight is 128. So if we wanna have one bit per, per uh, size four block in this page to be a used flag, that's gonna be 1024 divided by eight is 128, 128 bytes used bitmap. So this size here, is gonna be a size T, so that's gonna take eight bytes. Um, we're gonna have 128 bytes for our used bitmap, so that's 136 bytes. So the first, uh, I mean the first bunch of these are not gonna be allocable. We might wanna mark them as used in the used bitmap so that we don't allocate them by mistake. But, um, we can go ahead and share the metadata between these objects by just putting the metadata at the beginning of the page. When we go to see if we can allocate one of these, we can scan the bitmap to find one where the, the bit for that, that block isn't set, and then just return the pointer to that block directly to the user. And then when the user passes that to free, we can go ahead and use pointer arithmetic to round down to the nearest 4096 byte boundary, and that's gonna be directly at our size field here. The one complication here is that we don't have space to put a linked list cell in here. So instead of having our free list here be a free list of cells, we're gonna have to make our free list be a free list of blocks. And that means putting more stuff in here. So we have a previous pointer, 
and we have a next pointer all at the beginning of this page. So we have a free list of pages. And so in this four bucket here, rather than this being a pointer to a single block that we could allocate of, of either user usable size four or um, size four after we add in the header size, instead, we're just gonna have this point to this block up here. And then we have our previous field is gonna be null, because this is the first one on a doubly linked list. And the next field is gonna be null, because this is the last one on a doubly linked list. And all we need to do is, when we wanna allocate size four, we follow this list, look at the bitmap, find an item that's free, uh, mark it as not free, return the pointer. When this bitmap gets completely full, there's nothing free here. So we can actually just completely remove this entire page from the, from the free list of pages. And then when someone frees a block on this page, we notice that none of the alloc allocatable uh, blocks from here were free. One of them now is free, so we put it back on the free list. And this means that we can have arbitrarily small size allocations relatively efficiently. We're talking about a total overhead here of maybe 200 bytes out of 4K. That's a smaller overhead than our overhead was on larger sizes anyway. And yeah, we're able to do constant time malloc and free, the same as we could do with a um, like simpler bucket style allocator. The one trick that you need to do if you wanted to adapt this sort of system for the, uh, for the challenge assignment is you need to actually be able to do some sort of coalescing mechanism. That's the big weakness to these bucket allocators is they naturally just don't want you to, want you to do coalescing. They'd prefer you to assume that if you do a bunch of allocations of some size, at some point later in your program, you'll be doing allocations of that size again, and so it's not worth trying to coalesce to avoid that sort of intersize fragmentation. In the challenge, there's a test that verifies that you do have some way to handle intersize fragmentation, so we need to do some mechanism of coalescing or returning pages to the operating system. We can still do that here. The trick is, every time we completely free one of these pages, we want to just unmap it and remove it from the list. That'll guarantee that we can then remap it for a different size and everything will be fine. In a real allocator, you might want to do the same thing, but you probably want to leave at least one page on the list. Now, to complicate things a little bit more, for size four, having one page is the reasonable thing. Once we get up to things like size 3072 though, we kind of rather have a larger uh, chunk of memory mapped in from the operating system. And so rather than using chunks of 4K like we do here, we could do something like JE malloc does and have chunks of a megabyte. And so every time we come to a cell in the free, or a, a slot in our array of free lists that's empty and we're trying to allocate a thing of that size, we're just gonna mmap in a meg, set up the header at the beginning of that one meg chunk, which should take the first page, no matter how big the size it is, it should still only take the first page. Maybe size four if we're doing a meg, it's gonna take two pages. But it's not gonna take many pages at the beginning for, the, for this metadata header. And that means that on a system like Linux, where we don't really allocate physical memory until we've written something to it, we've requested a meg, our virtual memory goes up by a meg, but we aren't really using a meg of RAM, we're using a page of RAM, and we'll be able to get the rest of that meg sort of mapped in as a result of sort of page faults handled in the kernel without us having to do any additional system calls. So that's a neat trick, and that's the way we can sort of go crazy with optimizing a bucket style allocator. I don't necessarily recommend this for the, uh, for the challenge, but it's a like useful set of ideas to consider how you can apply it to the challenge. Good luck.